now let's make some noise for Alex Doman. Good morning. Good morning. How are we, LA? <laughs> Who's here this morning with the start with a phenomenal music experience? <laughs> How did that feel to you? Good. Music feels good. That's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I believe music can be everything. It can shift our perception. It can help us move from a hard place to a happy place. I've seen music help children with autism speak, communicate, to help Vietnam vets that couldn't sleep, suffering from PTSD, to heal. Music's a powerful force in our life. And it can shift us in so many ways. And what we're going to do in the workshops today is teach you the neuroscience of music and how to shift our perception almost instantaneously through our music experiences. You're going to go on a sound journey. We're going to take you on a nine minute ride using music that has helped people break through anxiety and get to their next point in life. Additionally, my beautiful wife, who's here in the audience, is going to share her story. Her story, how she's gone from pain to happiness, and how she uses sound in her daily life and music as a tool for change. So please join me in room 511B, and we'll see you later. So how's the conference so far? Awesome? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Much more than I expected. Much more. Um, they've really accomplished something exciting. And it is exciting as all the speakers is each of you here, each of us here, right? Because we're all in this place in our humanity that we want to shift. We know we can shift. I hope we know we can shift. And we're looking for tools and inspiration and stories that help us get to whatever that place may be that we want to go. Maybe we don't know. We're just on the journey. We're on the ride. We're in flow, right? Ebbs and flows, highs and lows. And music is a tool that can really help us shift, to shift our perception. I'm very fortunate to be a third generation in a family that believes we all have an unlimited capacity in our lives to achieve great things. And we don't know what that is, right? We don't know that plan. We don't know that path. We discover it, and it shifts every day in our lives. And the way that we look at it through our lens is we're on this human continuum. I don't care what diagnosis you may have or a loved one may have. Diagnosis, set up self-limiting beliefs about what our potential is and who we are. So we're on this human continuum. Can we agree to that? Okay. And maybe we're at a place where we need neurotherapeutics, right? We need neurorehabilitation. We need to shift to a place of neurowellness. Then when we're at neurowellness, we can shift to neuroperformance and move from a place of a damaged brain to a well brain to an optimized brain in life. And what we're going to talk about today is how music is a tool to help move us along this continuum of our humanity. Now, I'm curious, who today listened to some music before coming here? Raise your hands. Nice and high. OK, most of us. What did you listen to? Rigaton, okay. And why did you choose that? Okay, so you like energy in the morning, so you choose something with a faster tempo and strong beat to get you going. How about you? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so Henry, and we've had a lot of Henry, and he's, he's amazing. How about for you? DJ Dress. OK. 
Okay. Okay, so you were kind of going for a vibe just to awaken your senses and find flow? Okay, great. Anyone else want to share what you heard today? What'd you choose? What was your morning playlist? Okay. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So the interesting thing, if you could all see yourselves as you were speaking about your experience with music this morning, you have these beautiful smiles. Right? Music brings us incredible joy. And what's being used to bring community here at this event? Sound. We're welcomed by this beautiful sound bath with the crystal bowls and really upbeat music, right, to get us energy up. I don't know if you were all here yesterday, but my wife and I spent 15 hours in that room. And the music, right, helped us all flow and get through the day. So music is a powerful tool to change your brain. And it can shift your perception and really help you unleash your potential. I think each, each of us are here because we're seeking more, right? We're seeking more in our lives, better well-being, improved physical health. Maybe it's in our relationships, it's in our career, it's in our finances, or it's just within ourselves. Music can influence all of this. And music's everywhere. And I show you this picture because this is our youngest son. And this, we live in Ogden, Utah. So near Salt Lake City. And in the summer, this great organization puts pianos all over the streets. And it creates magic because these moments just happen. People see these instruments, and they're painted by local artists. And you're just drawn to them. And Brendan just had to go to this piano when he was a little guy. We've got a piano in our home, so it's something familiar. But he just had to touch it, and he had to interact with it, right? It brought him joy. Music is really everywhere. We use it in the gym. We play it in our cars. It's in our streets. And considering how much money we spend on music downloads, our Spotify accounts, headphones, going to live music events, one thing's very clear. Music is part of our life. It's a biological fact of our humanity. It brings us pleasure. It eases our pain. It can calm us. It can pump us up. We use it to worship, to celebrate, to mourn. Helps us manage pain. Can help us run faster, sleep soundly, and be more productive. And our brains are musical. So neuroscience is proven through functional brain imaging that when we hear music, virtually the whole brain is firing from our neocortex to our reptilian brain the most primitive areas and the most advanced areas that make us human respond to music. Not just our auditory senses, but it also employs networks that are responsible for how we plan and memorize things. Our attention, our language and communication, our vision and balance, our emotion and our moods, and much more. I really believe your brain is better on music. Your brain has the remarkable ability to change physically, functionally, chemically throughout your lifespan, from in utero to our last moments of breath. Our brain is dynamic and shifting and changing. In fact, because of our neuroplasticity, the brain you're going to wake up with tomorrow is different than the brain you have right at this moment because of the experiences. The things today that registered emotional meaning are going to stick with you. 
and the music that we use can help give our experiences more meaning and more value in our lives. So as we experience music, there's something called music neuroplasticity. Music can shape the brain and physically change it. Is that amazing? Just listening to something we love can do that. So I want to talk to you a bit about shifting our perception using music. <coughs> and one of the ways to do that is to bring music into our everyday life as a tool for positive change. So I want to explore some ways we could put music to work and how we can create a daily soundtrack in our lives and explore eight times in our day that we can incorporate music into your daily routine. So we're going to start with waking. Um, we're, this is going to be a participatory uh, break shop, breakout. What do you use to wake in the morning? Who uses an alarm clock that has some tone, an alerting tone to get you out of bed? Okay, so some of us. Raise your hands high. I, I want to make sure I see them. Okay. So you learned earlier that our cortisol, our stress hormone, is at its highest level when we wake. And it's there to raise the arousal in our brain to help us awaken. But when we give ourselves a buzzing alarm, we put our brain immediately into a state of are we safe or not. So I just want, want you to rest with that. There's no judgment. I've used alarms a lot, right? They have a purpose. Who raises with the sounds of birds singing in the trees outside their windows? That's great. Bird. 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 You have a pet in the yard, <laughs> right? Who raises with the sunlight? Good. Right? So our circadian rhythm, our circadian cycle, our 24-hour body clock is set to light and dark. So we should naturally wake with the light and the birds. As the birds are awakening, they should bring us awake. And if we go to Robin, Robin Sharma's 5 a.m. game plan, right? Well, that should time pretty well with the birds. And generally, you're up before the sun. So we may have to use other tools. But what if you use a soundtrack, a piece of beautiful music? So if you have a smartphone, and you all have a smartphone, Rather than an alarm, you can choose inspirational music, something that, that sets the tone for your day, right? Sets that mood, just like the 2020 plan, right? So what intention are we setting for the day? How do we want to feel for the day? Let's think about what we're waking with. And then as we're preparing for our day, right? We're getting ready to go to school. We're getting ready to go to work. Do you have a soundtrack for your morning? Yeah, well, what is it? Right, so you've got your 10 songs for your day, right? So maybe what you wake with, and you've got the morning ritual. Right. What do you use for your morning ritual? Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Who has a commute to go to work? or school each day. Do you commute in silence? Or I should say quiet, because we don't really experience silence in our world, right? That word is misused. Maybe we can find some quiet. Sometimes I commute with quiet. Um, podcasts, right? We listen to a lot of podcasts, I think, uh, those of us at Powerful You uh, this weekend. Audiobooks, right? So audiobooks, uh, talk radio. Right? That, that's kind of becoming a thing of the past, right? I grew up in Southern California listening to, to KROQ, and that's what I listened to before I 
went to school uh, in the mornings. And who uses music on your commute? Right? Okay. What does music during your commute do for you? Keep you company? Keep you cool when you're in LA traffic? Right? I like, I just had flashbacks. I left LA 25 years ago. Uh, I loved, I loved living here. I lived in Orange County, I lived in West LA, I lived in the Valley. But coming back in the traffic just brought back this flood of memories that really sucked. They were, they were bad. And I remember how I would use music just to get me through, right? And it was Chili Peppers, pretty much, is what I would listen to when I was in the car, just to kind of regulate myself and stay in a positive mood, mood and all the badness that was around me in L.A. traffic. Uh, how about during your work day? Okay, music during the work day? Do you live or work in an environment that permits you to play what you like through speakers? Okay, headphones? Okay, yeah, through headphones. And sometimes we need quiet too, right? So there's music that's conducive to work and to flow. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. There's music that's distracting there's music that we can use to help regulate ourselves if we anticipate a stressful event or experience a stressful event. Um, so we have different music for flow, for relaxation, or to get us pumped up. So we're going to talk a bit about that. How about breaks? When you take breaks in your day, do you take time for quiet? Because it isn't always about bringing in sound. Right? One of the best things you can do Find five minutes of quiet. I don't care if you have to go into a bathroom stall to find a quiet place. Do it. You need space from all the noise. So it isn't always about having sound. And when you're going home, are you preparing yourself for that transition from the workplace to your family? or the workplace to your quiet time if you live alone? How are you supporting yourself in that transition from place to place, from thing to thing? So how is music following you and supporting you on that journey of your day? Sorry, what's the best music to have in your home to connect, right? To remove discord, to support a, a healthy environment for communication. I just want you thinking about some of these ideas. What's your pre-sleep ritual? So I have a question around sleep. I do a lot around sleep. So uh, one of my three neurotechnology companies is Sleep Genius. And we create specific sound protocols to help you get to sleep and stay asleep and have a higher quality of sleep. Because other than stress, sleep's the most important thing you can do for your health and your well-being manage your stress, get sufficient sleep. So who has a regular time they go to bed every night? Or a goal of a time? A goal. Hit that plus or, plus or minus 30 minutes, you're doing good, okay? Get consistent with that. Consistent wake time, right? Frame your day. Start your day, end your day with that structure. It's going to help set your circadian cycle to help manage all of your life. What do you do before sleep? Screen. Try to keep the screen off 90 minutes to two hours before you're going to sleep because that blue light depletes your melatonin by about 30%. That's your sleep hormone. So what's happening is there is a part of the brain. It's called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. It's a big, fancy word. But what that does, right, this little section of the brain, is it takes the light in that comes from the retina, and it tells our brain whether we're supposed to be awake or asleep. And if there's light, brain says, I'm awake. If it's dark, you sleep. It's very simple. Dark room. A haven for sleep. Televisions, not ideal, right? Try to keep the electronics out of the bedroom. Bedroom, two things should happen in there. I'll leave your mind to that. <coughs> sleep, right? 
quiet environment? Do you use music to support your sleep? We're all, we're all a, a bit different with that, right? There's music that can help regulate our sleep patterns. For others, it's too distracting. But these are all points in your day, touch points, right? In that 24-hour cycle that you can use music as a tool to help shift, shift your perception. Now let's talk about um, that perception a little bit. <clears throat> Anyone ever seen this chart? This is called the circumplex model of affect. And it's a model for two complementary and very complex neurophysiological systems. One system is valence. That valence system which goes across the horizontal plane, horizontal axis, that is our mood, our perception of our mood, right? How am I feeling? Is it pleasant or unpleasant in this moment? So that's valence. Then you have the arousal. And by the way, these are both subconscious, what we call subcortical processes in the brain, right? They're, it's, they're automatic. They're automatic feelings that we experience. But our arousal, is it high? Or is it really low, right? So we need low arousal during sleep. We need high arousal when we wake, which is why cortisol spikes to wake us up when we get up in the morning. And I just want, you know, want, want to have you look at this chart because there is so much information right here about how to shift your perception, right? So how, how are we feeling right now? I want to encourage you to look at this chart and place yourself on it in this moment, okay? Are we in the lower portion, lower arousal state? Are we feeling content and calm, quiet or passive, sluggish and tired, right? So where, where might we be there? Are we on the upper end? So are we peppy and enthusiastic? Are we really active? Are we jittery and are we nervous? Right? Two extremes. And which side's positive and which is negative? Well, the right side of the chart, we tend to be in our happy place. The left side is the darker place that we don't function so well. Okay? So just tune into yourself and see where are you right now. And attend to this each day. Wake up. Look, where am I in this moment? Where do I want to go? Do I want to be in the place I'm at at this moment? Or do I need to shift my balance or my mood, my perception of pleasant or unpleasant? Do I need to bring my energy up, or is my energy way too high? And I've got to bring that stuff down. There was some high energy here yesterday. Right? It was great, but sometimes it gets a little frenetic, and we got to chill, right? So music can shift us. It can shift our neurophysiology almost on a dime, right? You don't even need to hear a piece of music that moves you. You just think about it, and it begins playing in your head and your anticipation of even experiencing it will shift you. You ever had that moment? Yeah. Could you share what that is? So you just brought me there. Right, when I was a little kid, I lived in Northern California. A little town of 400 called Moss Beach. It's part of Half Moon Bay. And the sound of the waves playing in the tide pools. I can smell the eucalyptus trees, right? 
I can taste the salt water. So I'm having like this sensory experience because you just shared you grew up by the beach. And I can hear that sound and I can hear the music of my childhood playing in that moment. Right? These things are all within us and we can call on them even when we can't access music. We can access it inside of ourselves and that feeling and that emotion. Is this chart helpful as a reference? So this is um, what I believe is one of the most powerful tools for understanding. And it's very aligned with the mission of Powerful You. Right? Check in, where are we? Where do we want to go? What are the tools to take us there? Music's one. So let, let's get in a little bit more into the how. But before we get into that how, this is our goal. This image. It's about balance in our life, right? We always have to be in a happy, happy place. Do we want to live in a sad, dark place? Do we always need to be high and happy and super energized or down low? We want to find balance, right? Because we need to tap into different levels of arousal in our day, in different mood states, to do different things. So what we want is to have a nervous system, an homeostasis, in a state of wellness that's healthy and receptive and can shift and is flexible to allow us to go where we want to go, even when we're resistant, right? So to use these tools to shift us. <clears throat> so music can help us do that. <clears throat> so a little bit more of the neuroscience. So it affects something called the HPA axis, and HPA stands for hypothalamic, pituitary, and adrenal. So this is a stress system within the brain. And this axis is a major part of the neurochemical system that regulates a number of our body functions, our immune system, our state of arousal and stress, attention and mood, and our emotionality. It's a very sensitive system that controls the release of several hormones in our central nervous system and also in our peripheral nervous system, which we're going to talk about. And this access controls the hormone cortisol. Right? We've talked a bit about cortisol, so this is what helps regulate our sleep and wake cycles, our arousal, our attention, and our stress reactions. So neuroscientists are very interested in music. And in fact, there were, you know, I don't remember the stat or the survey that I read, but there was something like a percentage of 80 or 90 percent of neuroscientists were musicians. And music is a great way to study the brain because it touches so many areas in the brain. You can learn a lot about a brain by giving music to it, right? So it's been a great tool for neuroscience and understanding neurophysiology. But the effect of music on the HPA axis is closely linked to our arousal, right? It contributes to both relaxation and activation in energy, okay? So this area in the brain. Music has been shown to modify our heart rate, okay? And it, to increase and improve heart rate variability, which is our best indicator of health, right? Our level of HRV in our system. Our respiration rate, our perspiration, and other autonomic systems. And as you look at this chart, this chart is a key, it's a guide to help you understand how to shift arousal and how to shift mood from unpleasant to pleasant. So in general, if we're in a state of unpleasantness, we're unhappy, and we want to shift to happy, right? That's one way that we can use our HPA access to shift our state. If we have low arousal and we're way too down and we need to get up, we can use music to shift our state through the HPA access. Okay, and if we're too high, we can drop ourselves down through this system. So this is a music chart that's a key to understanding 
how to use music to shift your state. So I want to explain it to you. As human beings, we hear a range of sound from very low sound frequencies at 20 cycles per second, 20 hertz, up to very high frequencies at 20,000 hertz, 20,000 cycles per second. So it's the rate of vibration of a sound wave. That's what the human ear can hear. Human body can feel as low as 10 hertz and as high as 100,000. So we're perceiving vibrations at sub-audible levels and above our auditory threshold that are affecting us. It's one of the reasons why a live music experience touches us so much more deeply than recorded music. So if you experience the sound baths in the events, you're being touched by that sound in real time. And that's shifting you. Not just what you hear, but the vibration that we feel. It's very powerful. So right here, we're just dealing with one part of the spectrum, just the hearing spectrum. So I'm going to start with what we call the blue zone. Okay? Our blue zone is our state of homeostasis and balance. Right? It is an experience of full sound frequency, using music and genres that we prefer, that we can tap into whenever we need just to set ourselves right. Okay? It's just kind of like our go-to. And sometimes if we're in high arousal and we need to chill out, and I think a lot of us are very interested in stress management, would we say that's true? Okay, we'd like to improve our stress resilience. The key music zone for stress resilience training is the green zone. These are low frequency sounds, low tones. Okay, so very low tones, good steady beat a good rhythm, frequencies below 1500 hertz, and tempos, very important, at 60 beats per minute, or slower, or slower. Who's had a massage? Who chills out with that massage music? Typically, that music's going to be 60 beats per minute or slower in the tempo. It's going to entrain your brain waves, your heart rate, your respiration to a slower, steady state, okay? To help you release, relax your muscles, go into a place that you can allow somebody to do body work and help shift where you're at in that moment. Music's a great facilitator for that. The low frequencies bathe our autonomic nervous system. They help us get into the relaxation response to regulate our autonomic nervous system, to go out of the sympathetic accelerator that we're on in our lives, right? We understand the autonomic nervous system. We'll talk a bit about it, but we have this sympathetic system, which is our go, right? That's the gas pedal. We have the parasympathetic, which is the brake. And we're looking to balance the two. We don't want too much gas. We don't want too much brake, right? If we're in a stressed state, we're in that go mode, right? We may be in fight mode, right? And then sometimes we, instead of fight, we flee or we feign, okay? We can go into a state of under arousal in response to what's happening. So sometimes with stress, we react to it, right? At the stressor, right? We get aggressive toward the stressor, feel badly about the stressor, get rid of that stressor. Other times we hide from it. We shut down. We put our system into protective mode. And they're both forms of protection. Using good, simple music, primarily instrumental, lower frequencies, slower tempos, help induce the relaxation response and help us regulate our stress levels and get us into a state of safety and comfort. Why we feel those, I'd like you to look at the chart, in our body. Those are the frequencies that we feel and process in our body and that ground us and give us calm. So we're up here and we need to come down here, go low and slow. It's a simple concept. You intuitively all do it, right? You know how to do this. The orange zone is interesting 
This is tempos generally, and the, these aren't absolutes, but a range, 60 to 90 beats per minute, and frequencies of about 1,500 to 5,000 hertz. You might be interested to know that's the range of the human voice. Really about 500 hertz to 5,000 are the fundamental frequencies of where we speak, okay? The sounds that come out of our throat, right? Where we process and express language. So this is a zone of communication, of focus, of attention, and flow state. So if we want to achieve a flow state, if we want some moder moderate activation, we go to the middle frequencies. And if we have to get our arousal up, we go to high frequency sounds, faster tempos, heavy beat, 5,000 to 20,000 hertz. We're looking at tempos of 90 beats per minute or higher, right? And you've all described a range of this music. You just didn't know this is how it was organized. So you can create a daily soundtrack and intuitively say, am I in the green zone? Am I in the orange zone? Am I in the red zone? And you can create playlists for yourself from your current music to help shift you between these states and find your balance in the blue. Is this making sense? Okay. We already talked about this uh, sympathetic, parasympathetic uh, idea. So <clears throat> a lot of the work that we do is helping children of all ages, right? We have our inner child and the time we were kids. Um, but we uh, do a lot of work with kids with neurodevelopmental disorders, autism, attentional issues, different mental health disorders, um, Down syndrome, brain injury, cerebral palsy. We help veterans with PTSD. We help high functioning adults build their stress resilience because it's often so low in so many of us. And what it looks like in your daily life, the work that we do at Advanced Brain Technologies, is you take 15 to 30 minute music breaks. You put on headphones. Those headphones have a, it's called a bone conductor in them that provides the vibration of the music through your body to get into that green zone and to help support your autonomic nervous system and then you hear the music through the earphones. You take 15 to 30 minute breaks each day, five days a week. You make it part of your daily routine. So this is like prescriptive therapeutic sound. You work with a coach, somebody that's trained, a practitioner, to take you through different music protocols to help regulate your system in addition to what you do with your daily playlist. These are easy things. As we're here at Powerful You, we're talking about tools. So this is one of the tools that we create to help support you. Now what I'd like you to do is just enjoy a little sample of some music in the green zone. I'd like you to close your eyes. Get comfortable. Take a couple of deep, long breaths. feel? 30 seconds. Music can shift our perception on a dime. Now that you're relaxed, let's shift again.
anyone feel a little happier, a little brighter? Energized, energized, calm, right? Inspired. Do you know what we name that piece of music? Inspire. We create music to create a specific effect. You actually named that piece. That's the hit. That's it, right there. So what happened? <coughs> you may have gotten a hit of dopamine, of oxytocin, of serotonin, of endorphins. 30 seconds. Not a lot. Now, you all use music in your daily life. And we all have our reasons for being here today. And we've moved to the portion of my breakout. Um, my wife asked to participate today, my beautiful wife. She's been my work partner and life partner for two decades now. And she's going to share with you, however briefly, where she was, where she is, and the role music is played in our journey. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay, Mandy. Hello, hello. I'm so excited, actually, to, you know, I've, I've really have been thinking about doing this for some time. And I think that within all of us, we all have our story that we feel like we may or may not want to share. And sometimes you feel like, I really want to, because I think it's really just going to set me free, bring in some peace, bring in light, all the things that we've been talking about. And then on the other hand, you think, well, that's like really scary, and how am I supposed to do that? And so I've just been really sitting with that for the last couple of days. And so basically I just want to just let you all know that if you feel like you have a story that you want to share, I hope that you can come to a place where you feel safe and loved and supported and wherever that is. And I just want you to know that I'm feeling that way with all of you in this experience, so thank you so much. Um, and what's been really amazing is that music truly has been an escape for me. It has been um, a journey. It's really kind of been my safe place, um, more than talking, because throughout my life, talking was actually very unsafe for me. So, to begin, <laughs> um, I was born to teenage parents. My mother was 15, my father was 17, and he actually had no business ever being a father. He should never have been a father. Um, from before I can remember, he molested me until I was in my early teens. I kept it a secret from everybody not my little sister, not anybody. And I struggled with that every single morning. I had to get up and I had to face the world and I had to be somebody that, I don't even know what that person was. I just remember like I had to smile all the time and I had to pretend like I was okay all the time. And it was exhausting and terrifying and my stomach hurt all the time and my heart raced all the time. And my biggest fear was that somebody was going to find out. So I felt like I was just looking over my shoulders from the time I woke up. And so by the time I got into junior high, which is already a very stressful, terrifying place, um, that was when my mother finally stopped the abuse. It was almost nightly. Um, and the hard part about that for me was that I never got to use my voice when I was young. I was somebody who was so quiet, it terrified me to ever speak. And sometimes my throat was just so tight, it felt like I was being strangled. And then when The Secret came out, I was my biggest fear actually came true because I was so afraid that we would lose everything. And we did. We had lost our beautiful new home. My dad went to jail. 
my family found out, my friends, neighbors, people I went to church with. Like, I felt like everybody was looking at me, at me, but nobody would connect with me. They didn't know what to say, and they didn't know how to be with me. And so I was just kind of left to deal with it. Um, with all the turmoil and everything, my mother really quickly remarried. So that meant that as we lost our home and as all of this stuff was happening, all of a sudden now there's this new person <laughs> that I really lovingly tried to accept and just be like, okay, this, this is life now. And that means that we just move on. But nobody really ever said like, hey, are you okay? <laughs> you know, or like, do you need therapy? Or I just kind of went on. Like it was kind of not really acknowledged <laughs> a little bit. So I struggled with um, a lot of depression and stress and anxiety. I remember like at one point in high school, I was getting like Fs in every single class and Us in every single class. I would walk in the door and I literally would just fall asleep because I was so physically, emotionally, mentally just exhausted. Do you know how many people even asked me? Like, I didn't have anyone say even like, what's going on with this person? Why is she not thriving in anything? And I made it through high school. <laughs> then I quickly got married because to me, like I just wanted to escape from it all. And I thought, I just want to be a mom and a wife and just be my own person. And to me, that's what it looked like. And I ended up being in a really, um, just a disastrous marriage. We brought out the worst in each other. And it was, you know, we would fight in front of the kids. It was like another really stressful, more grown up situation because all of a sudden now I'm a mom too, which is what I always wanted. But I finally got the courage to say, this is not where I need to be. I had so many dreams and I just imagined like my younger self being happy as an adult. Like, I wanted that for me so bad. I felt like I deserved it. Like, my childhood was so hard. I deserved to be happy as an adult. And I wanted that for myself. And so I started working at Advanced Brain Technologies, and I learned so much. I mean, my whole life was opened up in so many ways. Um, you know that orange part of the sound frequencies that represent your voice? Well, I actually discovered that I have a hearing loss, and um, also you can do a voice print analysis, and the part of my hearing that is missing is also the part of my voice that is missing. I literally have a hole in my voice from 1500 to about, well, what is it, 750 to about 1500 hertz, which is all those speech zones. And again, because I think I never had the opportunity to develop my voice, and so, just even standing here and talking to you guys, I feel like I'm already bringing that so much. Um, so fast forward today, Alex and I, you know, we have just such an amazing family and he saw me. He loved my two older boys like he, they were his own. We created just an amazing family and support structure for each other, this business and, and helping people. So. Through that process, you know, I learned that, wow, I really can create change in myself, and I can do that through music, which felt very safe because I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't. And I started doing the listening program when I was 23, and my family just started noticing almost right away that my voice was a lot stronger within about three or four months. Um, they had this funny thing that they would say, which were called Mandyisms, <laughs> and I would just replace words with random words that didn't make any sense in the sentence, and I did that all the time. So it was really hard for me just to be able to have a fluid sentence without stumbling over my words, and that started to get better. And I realized that as my relationship with my voice improved, also the relationship with my inner voice started to change too, and I started to kind of tear away the damaging, self-limiting thoughts and beliefs that I had and replacing them with thoughts of hope and pursuing my dreams and figuring out who I am as a person and what I want. And then 
my posture started to change when I was little. I was so hunched over, like I was just trying to curl into myself. And I noticed that my posture started to get better too. So I just really kind of, this music and the routine of a structure that Alex was explaining is exactly what I do. I surround myself in music, but I finally felt like I was able to step into myself and create a life that I'm so proud of now. I'm, I mean, I really am. It's a happy place. And I just feel like, you know, everybody deserves a chance to find out what that looks like for them and to be able to speak their truth. And um, so that's my story. And I really thank you guys so much for letting me share. So thank you. <laughs> Mandy's a member of the 5 a.m. club. <laughs> she didn't know it, but she has a morning ritual of music listening therapy, of art therapy, of yoga, of meditation, of journaling, and the last year, so consistent. And we have kind of a running joke um, at our company, is if somebody feels off and they're not in a good place and they're being reactive and they're not performing, we ask, have you been doing your music listening? And you can generally tell when one of us hasn't, when we've gone out of our habit, and we bring it back, and we shift back again. So it's always there for us. So to conclude, I'd like to give you an experience of listening to a session of sound, and then when you finish that experience, when the music stops, I just want you to quietly leave and just leave with the feeling of that experience, okay? There'll be no more words. So this is a piece of music that has helped many people shift from anxiety to shift off antidepressants, to be in a place of health and safety and uh, I just want to share it with you and hope that this shifts your perception. I'd like to focus, encourage you to focus your intention on something you want in your life. Not a dream, but a goal. Something concrete you've set your mind on achieving. It's only a goal if we wrote it down. So if it's not, if it's a dream, Go write that down, turn it into a goal. But let's use this experience to go into it. Encourage you to close your eyes. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale. Take another. Relax your shoulder, both shoulders. Relax your hands. Relax your feet. Continue breathing with your eyes closed. Focus on your dream becoming a goal. Focus on the next step toward your goal. And leave today prepared to take it. Focus on your breath. Water wanders, go back to your breath. 